Hey everyone, we released our game assembly required about 5 days ago, and I made a simple Unity 6 URP shader for it, that adds dithering and color palettes with a render texture for a retro look. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. The shader and example palettes are linked in the description, and if you're interested, check out assembly required too. The way this method works is that we are using a render texture, and we put that render texture into a UI canvas as a raw image. By creating a simple shader, we can simply attach a material on the UI raw image to put all kinds of effects on it. So, first of all, let's create a render texture. I'll name it something like rendering. A good way to set the size is just taking the aspect ratio you want to use and then just multiply it by the scalar you want to use. Now, an important thing is that if you are making a pixel art game, Set the filter mode to point. Now, let's make a new raw image in the canvas you have. And attach the render texture on the raw image. Now, attach the rendering to the output texture of the camera you are using. And now scale the raw image up. And then we would want to create a new camera. And call it something like UI camera. Parenting it under the main camera. Now, what we want to do is take the main camera and take UI away from it. And now, with the UI camera, we want to take everything off other than the UI. And now, this is what the game looks like. There is pixelation, but there's a noticeable lack of quantization of the colors and dithering. There's also a noticeable amount of color banding, which in certain situations is not something you want. In this case, to fix color banding, you have to select a render texture, and there is color format. There's a lot of different ones. By default it uses R8, G8, B8 and A8. To get rid of the issue, I myself would use, for example, R16, G16, B16, A16. From what I've understood, this is the bit amount. And as you can see, the color banding disappeared. Th this only pixelizes the image. Now let's move on to the dithering. You have to get a Bayer matrix for the dithering effect. I will link a GitHub repo with different kinds of Bayer matrices. I am using a Bayer 4x4 which is tiled. Remember that in the import settings of this specific texture, we want to set the compression to none, wrap mode to repeat and filter mode to point. Let's make a new canvas shader graph and name it something like retro effect. Let's open up the shader. So, what we first want to do is create a few variables. First of all, the render texture is for the render texture. We want to rename the reference of the 2D texture to underscore main text. What this does is that we do not need to input the render texture manually. It gets the render texture from the raw image texture variable. Next, we have the palette. And this is for the custom palettes that we are going to be implementing as well. I will talk about the saturation levels later. Same with the quantization level. We have the dither for the Bayer matrix which we are going to be using for the dither. And we have the dither opacity. First of all, we take the render texture and we drive it to the sample texture. Next, we want to create a dithering effect. Here, we are first going to attach the Bayer matrix. Also remember to attach the render texture you made before into the variable in the shader for preview purposes. Next, drop down the dithering texture and drive that into a sample texture 2D node. Now, the way we are going to get the dithering effect is that we are going to drive the render texture sample texture 2D into the sample texture 2D UV of the dither. We have to do some minor calculations first, mainly so that we do not have to manually set the dither size. First of all, we want to drive the render texture and the dither to a node called texture size. From this, we have to divide both the width and the height of both of these by each other. Like this. And then we combine that into a vector too. Now, we want to drive this into the tiling and offset node. And then we want to drive this into the dither textures sample texture 2D UV. And now we have something like this. What we want to do 
Now we want to take the RGBA value of the rent texture sample texture 2D node and drive that into a color space conversion node. From this, we want to convert this into HSV value. From that, we are going to split the node and then we are going to use the step node. So we are going to take the dither textures sample texture 2D RGBA output and step that. We are going to put this into the edge. Then we are going to take B and attach it to the step. And as you can see, we are getting a dither output. So let's attach that into the base color of this and make a material for this. Next, we are going to attach this material to the raw image we made before. And this is what we get. It is a bit hard on the eyes, so let's increase the size of the render texture. I will multiply it by 2. And this is what we get. Of course, this isn't all this effect will have. So, let's move on to adding color to this. Now, from this, what we want to do is that we want to add this into the color of the sample texture 2D. So, let's multiply. After this, we want to take the step output once again and drive that into one minus node. Then, we once again take the output of RGBA and make that also into a multiply node. Then we multiply this once again. This time we take the dither opacity, drive it through the one minus node, and then drive that into the multiply node's B input. Then we want to add these two together. Let's see what this looks like when I change the dither opacity. One means full opacity, zero means not at all. In the game assembly required, we used it at 0 0.5, so about halfway through. Let's see what this looks like in a game. Remember to adjust these values in the editor as well. And this is what it looks like. The only thing that is left is to add quantization and palettes into this. What quantization does is that it limits the amount of colors that are going to be shown. So let's do quantization. So we want to take this add node, drag it out and multiply it once again. Then we want to take the quantization level variable and put that into the multiply node's B input. And what we do is we floor this multiply values output. And as you can see, it's already limiting the amount of colors there are. So let's set this to like 64. Then what we do is we divide this. And we divide this by the quantization level. And now, if I take the quantization level and set it to 16, or 128, you can see a difference in the colors. One thing that you'd need to do is you have to add an add node, and then you have to get the output of the divide node and add it as well. This is already good. If you want to add palettes to it, you need to do a small addition to get rid of UV mapping issues. So you add the add node, and you add a divide node. In the divide node, what you want to do is create an extremely small number. So 0 0.5 divided by 1000. So if I drive that into the fragment shader's base color, let's see what happens. Let's change it to 64. Let's change it to 32. On top of this, we want a color palette. There are some specifications to the color palette in this method that I will explain a bit later. For me, this took a bit of time to figure out. So what we want to do is we want to take the divide output and drive it to a color space conversion node. And once again, we want to convert that into HSV. In this case, we want to convert it from RGB to linear. After this, we want to split this once again. 
Remember that in this case R is H, G is S and B is V. So from this we want to drive the saturation to a posterized node. Then we want to take the saturation levels. Let's make that 1 for now. Actually, let's make that 5 for now. Then we want to also take the B, in this case it is the value, so brightness. We want to take that and divide that. And we divide that by saturation levels. In addition, we want to divide that by 1. Let's attach the first divide into a clamp node. Then we want to take the first divide and divide it again and subtract from it. And from this we want to subtract an incredibly small number. 0 0.5 and then 1000. Then we drive this into the maximum of the clamp node. And after this clamping operation we want to add the clamping and then the posterize saturation levels together. Now from this we want to drive it into a vector 2 node, specifically the Y of it. And then we want to take the hue after the color space conversion, so R, and put it in the X. And now we just take the palette and put that through the sample texture 2D, and then drive the vector 2 node we just made into the UV. And let's drive that through the base color. Now let me explain how the palettes work. Palettes are textures set as sprites with clamp off and point filtering. Hue is mapped horizontally while the vertical axis represents both saturation and brightness. To use different saturation levels stack them vertically, highest saturation at the top and the lowest at the bottom. You do have to pay attention to where you put different hue values on the horizontal axis. I myself would take reference from Aceprite's box color selection tool. Do you remember to set the number of saturation layers in the material when assigning the palette? Now let's see the full effect in action. Thanks for watching and do check out Assembly Required, the link is in the description.